Hey everybody, what's up? Yeah, I thought I'd come on here and, um, well, I wanted to talk about this for a while because, you know, people, uh, I'm guessing kind of curious, of, curious as to how this money in the bank thing's going to work. Um, so far, right now, we're only scheduled to have two money in the bank matches. Um, if we're going to the third one, which would be for, which would be a tag team one, they better set something up by uh, tonight, today at the SmackDown live event uh, tapings in London. You know they better set something up because if not, then they need to. Then this rumor of a tag team one needs to kind of come to an end. Um, but as far as the money in the bank. Uh, ladder matches between the men and the women go people are probably curious of how that's going to work and quite honestly the way I think it's <coughs> the, th the way I think it's going to work is unless they are stupid you know unless uh, You know, unless they're stupid. My mom's alarm just went off. And like I said, unless they're stupid. Huh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. <laughs> I don't want to think what's going on kind of deal. You know. Huh. But like I said, unless they're stupid and they make the winners of Money in the Bank only cash in on the brand champions, then to me this opens the door for um, for a lot of possibilities and unpredictability. Because hopefully they make the announcement that whoever wins can cash in on the champion of their choice. That That's what I'm hoping they come up with. You know, uh, I'm hoping they come up with that um, idea that whoever um, cashes in, whoever cashes in can uh, cash in on the champion of their choice. Um, because, <coughs> excuse me, because I think it'll make things more intriguing, more interesting, because you will never know who, you know, you know, because basically the unpredictability is as the champion, you don't know when you're going to get cashed in on and whether or not it's going to be someone from another brand. Because think about it this way. Um, right now, let's take a look at the women. You got Charlotte, Ember Moon, and now recently Alexa. So, unless they play up these... So unless they continue to play up this feud with Alexa and Naya, and now you throw Ronda into the mix, unless they play that up and they have Alexa walk out with the Money in the Bank briefcase this year, the only way I see that paying off is that very night. It's the only way I see it paying off is that very night. And her cashing in on whoever the champion is. She just turned off. My mom just turned off her alarm. But like I said, who cashing in on whoever the champion is. Is after the match or. Excuse <coughs> me. <coughs> Or pulling a Seth Rollins and cashing in during or even as the match starts, turning it into a triple threat. It makes sense because if you're going to portray Alexa as this heel, 
that is very cowardly and afraid of people like Anaya and Aranda, it makes sense for her to do something like that. So that way, if she sees an opening, she can capitalize, pin whoever she wants to pin, mostly in this case it would be Naya. That way you protect Rhonda. And Alexa walked out with the championship, and if you want to put one final nail into this uh, rivalry, this feud, have it culminate out on probably Raw the next night or the following week, and then you can build to Rhonda Alexa at SummerSlam, give the belt to Rhonda then if you want to, and then use that as a catalyst to build to WrestleMania with her and um, and Charlotte. That's if they do that. Now I now I bring up Charlotte because she's also in the Money in the Bank match. This could be fairly interesting because you could have Charlotte hold on to the a briefcase. You can have Ronda become champion either at Money in the Bank or at SummerSlam, depending on how you do it. And you could build from there to WrestleMania, and then maybe um, you have Charlotte maybe the next night after Money in the Bank or after SummerSlam confront Ronda and say, I'm giving you this long, this long to prepare for, re- prepare for me. Because you, you can continue to keep Charlotte on SmackDown. You can continue p- having her pursue the SmackDown Women's title. But at the same time, you're letting her come out and tell Rhonda, hey, it might just be me and you. That it's going not it might be, but it's going to be me and you at WrestleMania for the Raw Women's Championship. And then on top, you know, and then on top of that, you could also maybe add in as time goes on, Charlotte winning the SmackDown's title, and then maybe making the cash in. A match at WrestleMania between her and Ronda, not only worthy of closing out Mania itself, but you do it by, but you make it more significant and important because not only is Charlotte cashing in at WrestleMania, thus giving Ronda time to get ready and making the build more hyped up and more anticipated and making this feel like a big time money match and main event worthy of Mania, closing out Mania, but at the same time, you also add in the possibility of unifying both women's championships. It makes sense, in my opinion, because then you could have one women's champion go across all brands. I mean, both main roster brands. It makes sense. It really does. It makes sense. And then maybe you could slowly use that to just let the women go across all brands because it's like, Look, the women only have like one championship to fight for. So we need something. And if the possibility of tag titles are being incorporated in the future, this is something they need to do. And I think a moment where Charlotte would win, probably, and then probably the night after SummerSlam or MITB, come out and confront whoever the champion is and basically say whoever it is, I'm cashing in at Mania, you know, give him time. And if it's Ronda, have her say, look, I'm going to give you time. We're going to make history. And I know some people don't want to hear that, but she can say, we're going to make the ultimate history. I'm cashing in this on you at WrestleMania in the main event. We are going to main event Mania when I cash this in. And then, like I said, on top of that, you could continue to keep Charlotte on SmackDown and then maybe have Charlotte, as we get close to the Mania, win the SmackDown Women's Championship. And then at the same time, and then simultaneously, you have a big money matchup there. Because like I said, you could have Charlotte not only defend her championship, but at the same, not only could you have a title for title situation, but you'll have a cash in as well. So it, it sounds a little convoluted, but it makes sense because it build, it makes the this match more important feel more important, feel more big time. And I think, I think it would definitely be worthy, or it would definitely show in the long run that this is something being built up in time. And now you add in these other factors that's going to make it worthy of closing out Mania. I really do. So when I look at the Money in the Bank matches between the women and the men, this year, unless 
And like I said, unless they put on the stupid caps and just say the winners can only cash in on the brand's champion, the logical solution is to let whoever wins the men's match, the women's match, and possibly the tag match, if they do one, to cash in on any brand's champions at any time throughout the year. You know, it's kind of like, you know, with, with Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman and all them. It's like, you want to push these guys, you want to give these guys significant momentum. And for someone like Kevin Owens, he could really stick it to Shane McMahon. Because think about this. Kevin Owens, let's say he wins the men's, he could rub it in Shane's face and say, hey, at any time I could show back up on your show cash this in and beat your champion and become the WWE champion. Something you don't want. It could happen. It could legitimately happen. Or somebody commented one time or mentioned one time discussing this, you could have Braun Strowman win and then have him do a John Cena and say, Brock, you're never here because it seems you don't care. So what I'm going to do is make sure you get, make sure you're here by cashing in this at SummerSlam against you one on one. So, there's a lot of situations. I mean, Bobby Roode's in the match now. Think about that. Bobby Roode could win, cash in at, against any champion. You know, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, there's probably a good chance you're going to get Andrea Cianamis into a, into it as well because if you're going to debut him tonight in London. The only way you debut him is is in a money is in a money in the bank qualifying match, and you allow him to win that. Yeah, the sky's the limit with that guy. The sky's the limit, and hey, he could end up cashing in on either champion. But to me, so I guess what I'm getting at, I and I'm kind of sure you're figuring out of what I'm the point I'm trying to get at is this year's money in the bank to make it successful. To make it a successful MITB event, they got to put in the stipulation that whoever wins either these two, maybe three ladder matches, can cash in on whatever champion they want. Because, remember, here's the deal. When they did Money in the Bank last year and it was just a SmackDown event, people still questioned, well, wait a minute. Carmella, when Carmella was still, champ still at the briefcase, they said, couldn't Carmella maybe pull a loophole and cash in her briefcase on the Ross champion. You know, everybody was wondering maybe she could do that because she has held it for so long. Maybe she could do that, but she never did. The plan was always for her to cash in on, on the SmackDown Women's Champion. Now, the door is opened even more so because now the winner can cash in on whatever champion they want. And like I said, unless they put the stupid caps on, Unless they put the stupid caps on, on, and they just announce that the winner, and they just announce that the winner of the matches can only cash in on the brand's champions. The MITB is going to be a failure. It is going to be an absolute failure. It's going to—I mean, you could have some great matches, but if you're just going to go with the stipulation of they can only cash in on the brand's champions. It's going to make the significance of Money in the Bank, especially this year since it's an interbrand show now, it's going to make it feel less important. It's going to make it feel less grand. It's going to make it feel less prestigious, and if not unpredictable. And that's what you want to go for, especially now if WWE wants to try to keep secrets and they wants to keep behind the scenes secrets and plans and stuff secretive you know secretive and prevent you know information of what storylines and stuff and pushes and everything from leaking out then they got to go this route they got to go the route of letting the winner cash in on whatever brand's champions they want so to me MITB this year has to go has to provide us with the unpredictability it has to and if you decide to go the brand route if you will maybe just for one 
the most logical sense, like I said earlier, is for Alexa to win the women's one, and then later on that night, cash in during the Naya Ronda match, either afterwards or during, you know, pull a Seth Rollins, and win the championship back, championship back there. So, but again, it's it's just my my thought, just my my thoughts and opinion on that. So, um. So yeah, I just, I think I think honestly the best route uh, for them, if that's the if they don't do that, it's the only brand one. I think the best route is to go the unpredictable cash in or whatever brand champion they want to route. So, uh, but that's really all I'm gonna say on it, folks. Uh, let me know what you think down below. Comment if you like, and I'll talk to you all later. But let me know what you guys think. O two R Central Deluxe Man, I'd like to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think. Peace out. God bless.